can we add, we'll get, get close to starting here. A few two lives up and running. You are now live on YouTube. Thank you. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the June 9th uh, DRC meeting will start at 10.02. Um, for, yep, for the first item on the agenda would be the park review subdivision, which will include uh, Chris Polson. So Penny, if you would admit him into the, the Zoom meeting. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's appeared to. Typical participants. Good morning, Chris. Are you able to to see us and participate? Might need to unmute your, there we go. All right, yep, I can hear you just fine. Great, sounds good. Okay, all, so the first item on the agenda, as I said, is the park review subdivision. Um, let me pull. Stop, stop sharing the other one first. Thank you. Up at the top of the red, right there. Stop share, there we go. Then go back. And then we gotta do there. You can come have a seat if you want. All right. So the first item on the agenda, as I said, is the, the park review subdivision. Um, cool. yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, do you state your full name for the yeah. record minutes? Uh, Colton Peterson. Okay. Um, so this is a, a, essentially, this has gone through the process previously. Um, it got final approval from the planning commission is a three lot subdivision. However, the reason it's coming back to DRC today is because they're proposing modifying the lot lines associated with the previous approvals. Um, this is being done to, to help facilitate the existing building, which is a big old tire that's on lot two, the central lot here, to allow for development and a new building <laughs> to be built on Lot one, uh, which is on the corner of Main Street and Highland Drive, and then um, and to also basically allow those two lots to, to develop and, and move forward. Lot three is large enough that it'd be able to accommodate um, the those lot lines. Um, this really is a a fairly minor change to the approval. Um, so, but it does still have to come back for to DRC and review that portion of it. So again, it's a three lot subdivision. Utilities didn't change associated with the with the property and with the subdivision. Again, it's just a lot line that's being modified with it. The purpose of the lot line was pretty much just to get more parking, right? Yeah. So the appropriate parking in the appropriate lots, right? right. Yeah. Yep. It was it was also to get the correct landscape buffer between lot one and lot two. So once we had figured out the car wash layout for lot one. And had confirmed that we needed to have the five foot landscaping buffer between lot two and lot one. The lot line needed to shift further south just to make sure that landscape buffer was met. So, so essentially, if, if the DRC determines that this is a, a minor change, then this is as far as it needs to go. We need to go back to planning commission or city council or anything like that. So, uh, I think it's a minor change. And, and uh, so, I guess we got, we got to go through everybody before we make a motion, but this is pretty straightforward. Yep. So with that said, um, we'll go around the, the DRC. Taylor with fire. I don't have anything. Okay. That one's on. I know that one's on. Okay. Nothing in the post office. Nor the administration. I have a couple of questions on there. I don't recall from the previous one. Did they have notations or plotting of 
cross ask access easements for each of the lots. So does one have access through two and does three have access through two? So there is a shared access that um, it's, it's platted starting out the existing entrance, rolls through that curved entrance, comes up to the existing big old tire building, the parking lot, and then mm -hmm. it is shared and does a butt up to lot one. So it is okay. a shared access between one, two, and three. There's also that parking easement as well. So there's a few parking stalls that lot two is sharing with lot one. Okay, so this is not site plan, so that's not we're not we're not worried about that here. But right. again, that's the purpose for it. Well, I mean that they are going to record it on the plat. Uh, it so would does be, that have to go to planning commission? That's my question. It would be more in conjunction with with planning commission, and that would fall, probably fall under the shared parking um, criteria. But would that come through on the site plan? It would. So we'll have a shared parking agreement that would be expected at, at uh, during the site plan. But I mean, I guess the parking is kind of one and the same and I, I don't have any problem with it. But um, in order for that parking easement to be in effect, the planning commission would need to approve that and that can happen at the site plan stage. So, and, and then the last question that I have is, does this provide the existing building and structures that are there meet all setbacks and everything that's required in the zone that's not going to be affected by the way that they're proposing this to be lost. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. It is. Okay. They have a pretty wide, they have the parking and then they have some area in between the parking sites. Okay. That's all I have. That's all the questions I have. Okay. Wait. I don't have any. Okay. Randy with building? I think we made some adjustments on the addressing, didn't we? Yes. So it should be on that red line. Okay. okay. And Jason, anything else? Yeah, nothing more. Okay. Um, as 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 Randy mentioned, there are a couple just um, uh, addressing comments on those. We'll provide those to you. Uh, mostly just some cleanup items that were on there. Um, one in particular, like on the boundary description, it's stated Highland Drive, State Road 198. State Road 198 actually ends at Main Street. Going south of Main Street, it's um, it's Highland Drive. So it's just Highland Drive and a public road. Okay, we can yep. we can modify that. Yeah, no it, problem. Just minor minor comments such as that, such as addressing, cleaning those up, are, are the only comments that we'll have. We'll provide those to you once uh, uh, after after this meeting. So perfect. And just as a point of reference or clarification for everyone, that fifty foot right of way for ingress and egress. The Colton and Chuck are in the process of working with title companies and attorneys to get in touch with the neighboring property to the east to get their signature to get that removed. So that, that easement doesn't serve any purpose anymore now that Main Street extends to the east. So it needs to go away. They're just going through the proper channels to get the signatures to vacate that the, uh, the proper way. Great. Okay, okay great. Okay. Um, yeah, any other discussion? Red lines or nope. Planning Commission red lines. Nope. Red so, anything else? Yep. If anything else, look for a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the uh, changes on the on the subdivision plat as proposed, uh, with the stipulation that they cover the address red lines that are that will be sent back to them. Okay. I have a motion. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second. Can I suggest an, an addition that sure. the, the parking uh, shared parking agreement be taken care of at the site plan? Uh, stage. Perfect. I'll add that to my motion. I'll okay. second that. <clears throat> okay. So we've got a motion to approve uh, pending uh, red line comments, which include addressing and also that a shared parking agreement be uh, provided at uh, site plan approval, site plan review for lot one. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, we'll proceed with getting the, the next steps on the subdivision. So, and if you'd like, I, I mean, I guess it's found that shared parking again. The planning commission has to approve that. That can go whenever you, you want. I mean, okay. it doesn't have to, to happen after site plan approval, but uh, it is uh, going to be part of if they need right. a lot one, it is going to be part of that site plan approval. So, Correct. you do it concurrently or you could do it before. So if you if you want to move that forward, if you you it'd be right now a shared parking agreement with yourself, so it's pretty easy because you own both properties. So uh, 
if you'd like, we have examples of shared parking agreements. They're pretty simple, okay. but we just would need something like that to be approved by the Planning Commission before the DRC could approve a site plan. Okay. So just let us know yeah. when you want to proceed forward with that. Okay. And just yeah, one anyone. comment on lot one, which is where the car wash is going to be. Uh -huh. It's addressed off of Highland Drive. Would you like an address off of 8th Street? Because then that way the access is going to be going to be. Yeah. <clears throat> Because we could add a main street address on the that lot. So. Okay. That's a great point. Probably a good idea. Sounds good. So there's the road two road accesses. Road. There's an access up there. There, there is. An, an, there's an ingress on Main Street, and the egress would be out on Highland Drive. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, with your site plan, we have everything except for landscaping. So once you submit the landscaping, we can put it on ERC. And we ought to be having that that shared agreement, shared parking agreement, go through at the same time because you're going to need it for one. Right. right. We probably won't even be on the DRC agenda for a site plan review until we have that shared parking figured out. But and I guess for purposes of so to clarify, if you send your mail truck in, that in the <laughs> you're going to have to get there. You're going to have to go through the wash. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Just to expound a little bit, what, 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 what you could expect with the site plan. Get two birds with one stone. Oh, there right? you go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, You've been great. Yep. Thank you. All right. The next item, I can go through the next item on the agenda is the Erkenbrac, uh subdivision review. This is a A proposed subdivision um, located up on 400 North. Sorry, one second. Located on 400 North um, at approximately five, you know, 500 East, 550 East, roughly. Um, there's an existing home, two existing homes um, associated with the sub, the proposed subdivision. Um, and so to kind of give you a, a reference of that, um, it's a proposed three lot where we'd have uh, a, essentially a new building lot provided here in lot two is our understanding. And then um, uh, the existing home would remain on, on, on a lot there. Um, there's a couple, we looked at this concept wise a couple months ago. Um, provided feedback at that point, and there's this is their their resubmittal on that. So, um, with that said, we do have Clint Erkenbrack here um, representing it. Was do you know if your engineer was going to plan on attending? I don't think we have. No, I don't think he is. Okay. So, um, with that said, we'll uh, proceed going through around the DRC. Starting with fire. Do uh, okay, they have anything? Okay. okay. Just when your building's up and closed, come into the post office and we'll tell you where to put the box. Okay. Um. Okay. Um, Norm, the administration. So a couple, couple of things. It looks like lot two is planning over <coughs> the top of a building. Is that a shed a or a hay barn or something that's there that's now? Yeah. It'll be removed. So, so, Jason, I'm just wondering, how, does that create any um conflict or concern with an existing structure being platted over and, and cut in half by a by a subdivision. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. Are you when are you planning on removing it? It's in the process, right? In the process right now. We can make that commission whole, approval that, yeah. that the building well the whole thing wouldn't have to go just the part that's on the old part, right? They're, they're taking right. Away. Yeah. Okay. Right. It is on the plans for some uh, sheets three and four aren't showing up on this. But uh, the plans do indicate that that, that building is going to be demolished. Okay. And the address would be my address is six oh five. Oh six oh five. So it's got to be six twenty. Okay. We, we went through those. They're on. Yeah. Have, I had them. So we'll send red lines. And yep. Suggested addresses according to what's around you. All okay. that kind of stuff, right? Here. <clears throat> I have already gone through that. Yep. So. Okay, Norm, do you have anything else? Or? Um, just the other thing is, I'm sure Jason will cover this as well, is just the remnant piece that's being left there um, and how that would be addressed and, and that kind of thing. So 
the, the home that's there, the existing home, I don't think ever went through a subdivision process and where that's getting a, a, a piece of the pie now, you know, maybe Jason, you can speak to that as far as how that works with, with city code. Yeah, and, but basically- We don't allow remnant pieces, I understand right. that. Well, and, and I remember a concept, we talked about this, and, and I think your note there, parcel to be dedicated to the neighboring parcel, which is the ex existing home. I think instead of having it as its own separate parcel, or at least this is the way it looks like on the, the plan, it just needs to be <clears throat> part of that, you know, become part of it rather than be its own separate thing because it technically we couldn't approve that because it doesn't meet zoning requirements for having appropriate frontage and stuff like that. So. Uh, Maybe, maybe just, and I know we've already made a red line on it, but, but maybe just make that clear that it's part of the existing home parcel rather than it appearing to be its own parcel. Which I'm not understanding. So this little triangle right here, it, it makes it look like it's going to be its own parcel. But if this is just part of that, and, yeah. and this, I know that sounds like that's the intention. The board, uh, property line agreement. So if, do, you, do you have a boundary line agreement already in place? Yeah. If you do, we'll need to have a copy of that and record it. And then it would, that, that would change the subdivision boundary over to the east side of lot number two rather than the east side of that yeah. remnant piece. So the, what, what the code is, is that we can't leave <laughs> remnant pieces like that because it's not a buildable lot, et cetera, et cetera. We understand what the intent is, is to get that over to the neighbor's property but this subdivision plat doesn't accomplish that. A boundary line agreement would. We'll need to get that boundary line agreement and get that a recorded copy and then have Richard uh, change that, that boundary of the subdivision to be the eastern side of lot two rather than the eastern side of that remnant. Okay. I think it just That's, needs to be clear on the Yeah, plat. it just needs to be cleaned up and clear. This, 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 this creates a, a, a lot that's not buildable and we can't, we don't allow that. Yeah. Just in city code. I mean, just as, I believe we sent you a boundary agreement on that the description of that. Um, I don't remember seeing it, but if we, we yeah, we'll certainly we'll say, we'll look and look see. For it, but I don't remember seeing it in the submission. Yeah. We have it. We'll take that red line off if we don't. We'll, on and then see well the red line still needs to adjust that eastern boundary of that leg over to the east the east side of lot two rather than the east side of that that remnant piece. Okay. Yep. And then the, the boundary line agreement, just for county purposes, the boundary line agreement would have to be recorded at the county before the plat. Yes. And so for just procedurally, they won't do it that way because it creates two parcel numbers and two tax ID numbers and two tax billings and all that kind of stuff with no, no residents or anything on the property. So <laughs> really killing two birds with one stone there with, with meeting our requirements and allowing the counties to be able to record it because they'll just kick it back the way that it is. Yep. Okay. That's that's all I have. Okay. Wait, public utilities, I'm sure you had the discussion, but we don't have sewer in that. <coughs> so it's a septic <coughs> mm -hmm. so future sewer is a, is a provision in there that they can be paid. So so the way that this is moving forward, <coughs> I believe, is that Clint is going to seek a deferral agreement from the city <coughs> council for improvements meaning curb gutter and sidewalk and the sewer would be included in that in the wording in that deferral agreement and then, again helping them to under any future property owners to understand that it's a requirement it's just being deferred so that's correct i, I don't like the idea of putting the sewer in the deferral agreement because the sewer doesn't have to happen whenever sewer gets close enough to their property right well but but they're not all tied together timing wise in the agreement it's just a it's just a piece of the agreement that says we're deferring it for now, basically, because they're going to do septic. Are we deferring it, or are they just they're they're far well, enough away from sewer that they can they still can. have a septic? We, we we have to defer it because there's nothing to connect to basically at this point in time. Which, now, which just is the standard procedure for if you if you're far well, enough I'm away. I'm sure that the other it. two lots that he did a couple of years ago also have the sewer listed <clears> in the <throat> deferral agreement, just because okay. it, it is it is part of the infrastructure that we technically require. Yeah, yes, but. It's yeah. not feasible right now, and therefore the, the, the septic system. So the sewer, sewer, yes, but water, water line looping does have to go around. And that, I appreciate you bringing up that point. So it's about 1,400 feet of water line that would go over from roughly in front of that existing right home there, right? Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's just right there. 
Yeah, right there in front of that home, there's an existing water line that we need to go over and connect it uh, at Orchard Lane. And that's two different pressure zones. And so we would also need a PRV over on Orchard Lane. We wouldn't want the PRV on 400 because the intent would be that everything future on 400 would be served with this line and everything south of that would be at, at the upper pressure zone. Like the bottom of the house is on the orchard. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. For the PRV. So, so there's some substantial <clears throat> cost with that. We recognize that, uh, Clinton. As far as as far as the PRV goes, the city can can pay for that because it is part of what what we call a system improvement. It's part of our overall master plan. We have PRVs located all over in, in town and new ones planned so that we can accomplish what we're trying to accomplish here. So that portion of it, we could the, the city can cover that through impact fees. The, the water line is going to be all up to you. However, we could enter to go along with the deferral agreement. We could also you could also approach the city council and ask them to enter into what's called a connectors agreement. And that would allow for, say, a 10 year period, you to recoup some of the cost of that 1400 feet of line. If somebody else hooks to it and benefits from it, then that would help you to be able to, to recoup some of that cost. Does that make sense? Yeah, we have that on the When we put it down to where it is now, we have that. You have that same type of agreement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so Nobody built on <laughs> right, but, but again, it's a potential for you yeah. to maybe try and recoup some of those costs. Yes. Now, now recognize that would be a separate agreement from the deferral agreement. Since I presume you're going to approach the city council <clears> with a <throat> deferral agreement, I would suggest that we take both of those to the city council at the same time and they can address that uh, uh, accordingly. Okay. Does that work okay for you? Yep. Okay. So that, that does that answer your question on utilities? Yeah, and, then, and then PI is already there. PI already loops around yes. it, right? It does. Okay. So I'm still a little confused and concerned about this the sewer being in the deferral agreement because the deferral agreement assumes that the city will be putting in the infrastructure later and that costs will be uh, paid to the city to do those improvements. Is that does having a sewer in the development agreement make it in so, any way that the city will be putting in the sewer line? Not necessarily. In fact, we can word it such that when sewer okay. comes through, they would be. The, the, the curb and gutter, you're right, is in, in sidewalk is assumed that the city would do it at some point in the future through an SID or something of that right. mechanism. However, we have had multiple areas in town where the city has actually put the sewer in, like Night South. Mm -hmm. 900 South was the, the city paid for that whole sewer line, and the folks along <laughs> there uh, uh, paid for their connection costs. So that was back in 2009, I think, that we did that. So it, okay. it's 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 you're you're right that the deferral agreement assumes that the city is going to put it in, but at some point in time when it gets there, well, you know, the, there may be the opposite of what Clint what we're talking about with Clint on the water line. The, the folks across the street may develop and put the sewer line in, and they may want to enter into a connectors agreement that when these others connect into it, that they help pay for some of those okay. costs as well. I just, just so we'll, we'll that. word that. We'll, we'll need to Brian. We'll need to look at that deferral agreement before we send it. To make sure that it's worded accordingly, Jason. I just wanted to clarify that because usually sewers don't make it in. That's going to be a major sewer trunk line coming from right, right, north before that can be served. Right, yes. right. going okay. down the future right away yeah. for, the, for the school district. Yes. Yeah, just wanted to make that so, clear. So, Clint, do you have any questions on that or any concerns with oh, where we're going there? Okay. All right. We, we would probably want to have you do it all in one project with the ERV and the and the water line. So therefore, you'd need to get three bids, and that way, when the city comes time to have to pay for the to pay for the uh, PRV, then we have the a competitive process that's gone through to meet state code. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Randy of building. Nothing. Okay. Jason, we already talked about what I was going to bring up. Okay. Um, say a couple of the notes just on the, the septic tank as you go to start um, building that out and we get the time for building permit and everything associated with that we need record from the county health department that they've approved the, a septic tank in those those lots for those for them um, for the new home the rest of them are there but just for that new home a lot too um, so to go along with that also john one of the recommendations and i don't remember if it's noted on there or not but we would recommend that you set up any new homes yes. with sewer such that you can tie the sewer in the front of the house at some point in time. We, we did that on the other two lots, but they went out the back. Yeah. 
Uh, and so that may be something that we need, may need to look at here. But however we do that, you need to, it would be wise for you. We're not going to require you to do, but it would be wise for you to make the provisions for your septic system such that it can tie into the sewer at some point in time later. But you want us to do it to the front or to the back? We well, with, that, with, with the other ones, we figured it would go to the back. And if you yeah. want to do that same thing here, you could record an easement. Is that the school district property just to the west right there? This you is could the record an easement property. across the back of your lot with, with your existing home, right? You could record an easement just like what we did before for lot two across lot one so that the sewer could come in that way and then you would have a lateral across the back there. Okay. That probably makes the most sense yeah. because otherwise the, the sewer also in fourth north would have to be 11 feet deep to be able to catch that far of a run. So we're happy to, to have you do that. We just we're, we'll recommend that that is something we would want to have you put on the flat is to have that um, uh, that easement in the back there so that it's taken care of in the future that when we come to you and say, hey, Clint, lot number two, it's now 300 feet from you. You've got to connect to it. You have the provision to do that. We don't have to go back and, and juggle things around again. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So okay. let's make we'll sure put that, that note on there. The, uh, the, on, on the other lot to the east. So the so McMullen lot. lot. It's also potentially um, depend. As I say, it depends on how close. I think the overall. A little more challenging on that one, but we certainly could. That might yes. not be a bad idea to do that one as well. But you'd have to do it across lot two and lot one. Well, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> you want an easement because I know that we had that one before we had it in the second day. You want an easement going through there to where that can be connected. Yes, I think that's probably a good idea. <laughs> yep. What's the septic on the McMullen house? Is in the back? It's in the back. Yeah, okay. They're yeah, all in the back. That's probably the best way to do it then is to put a put an easement <laughs> across and then you'll have to do a little leg down to catch the other easement by your on the back of yours. Yep. Those could potentially be the same easement right. just with the uh, calling in, in both favor of those out. lots two and three. Yep. Yeah, accordingly. Um, and then just uh, in regards to the, the frontage, the right of way within 400 north, um, the because of the how Fort North is already in, it basically, there's the right of way actually hasn't been fully dedicated, and so. Um, one thing, one point of reference is one that's been um, recorded in the recent past is the, again, same subdivision we've been referencing earlier to the to the west, the other urban brack subdivision. Um, that's kind of really pretty close to set the north. The same mechanism yep, that they have there rather the than same the north right of way line there, just so that, so that right of way line is fairly consistent along there. And then, um, you know, as as areas around here develop, that we'll we'll have a base point to go off of for the full right of way width there. Right. In other words, so, we're not using a different basis here than we did for your other two lots that we did yeah, a few years ago. We want those all tied together. Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh. One one note. Uh. You, say it's just a note that needs to be included on the plat as you're within uh 500 feet of a ag protection zone, and so that. And that note needs to be on the on the plat, and we've given the wording uh, for that note that needs to be in there. So, just a note needs to be on the plat um, associated with it. Um, we've already talked about those items, utilities, and then um, understand you're going looking at a deferral agreement for the uh, for the subdivision. However, at this point, we're still proceeding as as if you know that deferral agreement's not there. Um, so a couple of things we need is how is storm drain going to be handled? Um, we need those that information, whether it be with sumps, whether you know we still need to see all those improvements. They all need to be shown because they are required. Um, and you know as we roll through with the the process and as the development agreement comes through, because it's not a guarantee the development the deferral agreement. I apologize will be approved. However, so we need to proceed down the the track that we need those can, that can plant on there. Can we get the deferral agreements first and not have to do all that? That potential to be what we could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It just lengthens out the process. That's the only thing is if it has to come back and, and have it redrawn, then yeah. it just lengthens out the potential process. Yep. 
And so, and, and, and you being on the city council agenda for, for them to consider your deferment just really depends on, on when you can get the deferral agreement language prepared. Now, we, we have a template that will do 90% of the work for you, but nonetheless, we're going to need you to, to button that up and, and have something before it before we put you on the agenda. So on a resubmit, what I would expect on a resubmit on this, I would expect all the red lines taken care of. Mm -hmm. I would I would expect the deferral agreement draft ready to go to the council. And I would expect that connector's agreement that we talked about with the water line kind of to come back as a, as a full package so that we're not doing it a piecemeal. And, oh, well, now we got to go get the water thing. We Now we got to go get the deferral agreement. We, we would just like it all of it to be in one package right. so that at that time point in time that we have that, we can then moving forward to, to planning commission and then towards the city council and, and all of them can just be in line and, and we're ready to go with all of them at the same time. That's true. I mean, this is going to need to go to the city council uh, anyway. So right. we, we don't have to do the deferral agreement before. It could just happen concurrently concurrently with everything right. else. Right. But yep. if I don't get the deferral agreement before, have I got to the storm drains? Well, all you, you have to do curb gutter, sidewalk, storm drain, <laughs> Everything you have to do, all of that stuff, if you don't get a deferral. Well, I think what he's talking about is, is do is the draw show it on the yeah, yeah. No, I think we just move forward without that for now, and then and then just know that that's a risk that you take if you don't get a deferral agreement that you, that you end up having to come back and redo the drawings. Yeah. Yep. So, so, yeah. Okay. Those are, uh, let's say, it's those you're going to send that to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll provide these to you. you and Yep, we and, and we we'll provide the template a, on those. We'll send you a draft connectors agreement as well, what okay. we've recently done. So that they can you again, these are all drafts and it's just proposed wording, nothing's approved. It's just something for you to look at and say, yes, I agree with it, or no, I don't. We need to change these things or whatever, and then we can go about it that way. Yep. The deferral agreement is pretty standard. It, we've yeah. done a dozen or so of those in the last few years. That one's pretty standard. The connectors agreement can get a little bit iffy, but with it only being water, I think we're going to be fine. Well, remember the deferral agreement, we, want, we need to address the sewer, so it'll be a little bit, a little bit different. But it's still pretty standard. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Okay. Okay, the water line. <coughs> when can we start on that? Uh, <coughs> not until we get approval on everything. Correct. Yep. yep. And then we'll need appropriate bonding and those, and those type of items, items in place. So, yeah, you can start getting bids on it, and, and we have a standard actually for a PRV that they can put in there as well. So they they you can put that in your drawings or in your bid package to go out to people. You can certainly start bidding on it. Yep. Okay, you can send that to yep. Do you want three? We'd have to have three bids in order for us as a city to pay for infrastructure like that with impact fees we have to have at least three bids that show that it was gone through a it has gone through a competitive competitive bidding process just on the prv right we, yeah. we, but i assume you're going to have whoever bids the prv to set right. it as a water line but you know the, the, the biggest problem with it is is a prv and then a different contractor to do the water line you're going to get this stuff going on where i'm not connecting to that that's not my job that kind of thing we would we would anticipate that it would be in one bid package but i guess if it isn't, we could look at that. Yep. It out. Yep. Um, okay. So with this, again, this is a, um, it does qualify, if I remember correctly, for the streamline process, correct? Or? Well, with, with that fourth lot being a part of it, it's going to go to council anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So with that being the case, it'd be a preliminary, would be looking at a preliminary process on this so um essentially the rc becomes a recommending body at this point prior to going to planning commission for review by them for recommendation to city council um so with that said with any is there any other discussion yeah <clears throat> another question for you for for the uh the line agreement water line agreement there the little parcel that you want to go away to get that there to where I can record it, I still need a letter from the city stating that my lot with the new uh, that we're adding to it, just about three quarters acre, will be 
a legal lot in the San Juan City. Which one, number two? Lot two. Where my original house is. Oh, for lot one. For lot one. I need to see. So right now, lot one is, is where my it's house 200 is. Foot. All of the ground behind me is all lot one. Right. You, you're talking about the fact that, that everything except for McMullen's is currently under one parcel number of the county. That's, That's what you're correct. talking about. Mm -hmm. And, and, and lot one was the, the entirety of it was built under current the, the current city code at the time. Um, but if I don't I, know how we can accomplish that because it's it, it's well that's that's what this whole process is is going through going through the process to get lot two a a legal lot. So that, that's that's the thing is it's, it's the cart before the horse, but we can't write a letter saying so once this is recorded, that will become a legal. So I can't, I can't record that until I get that free. The bank's going to release all the rest of the ground and just take that one there, and that there will clear all those properties, and then I can go record it. Right now, it has a mortgage on it, so I cannot record anything. Okay, so basically, this would just need to happen kind of in conjunction with when when this subdivision goes to get recorded, the boundary land agreement needs to get recorded. Beforehand, and then they won't. That's what he's saying. If the county won't record it beforehand, it doesn't matter if it's today or three minutes before. They won't record it until I get back clear. That's what I've been trying to do. And the bank can't do it until they have a letter from Sanctum City stating that that will be a legal lot. Well, we could we could probably put a letter together that says it will be a lot once the. And we a lot once the subdivision's recorded. And we've done that. We've done that. We won't accept it. We've got to have it to where the description. That but it's not approved right now today. That's the problem. That's We, we can't give them a letter could stating you, something that's not approved. Could you approved. provide me with your, 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 uh, the financial institutions? I'd like to talk about that because this is, this is like a quite well, a we've, we, we've not had this issue before, no. so I'm not sure what's happening with it. But Yeah, I can give you her name. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I'd, and, 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 and maybe a call to the county just to figure out. Right. I mean, we're, we're happy to work through whatever we can work through, but it's impossible for us to tell you you have a lot one as it's configured on that plan because it's not recorded. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. That's it. That's impossible for us to do. We can't say there's a lot one as it's configured on that piece of paper right there because it's not. It's all that whole great big five or seven or however many acres yeah. is there. Yeah. So we're, we're happy so, to work with so, you. So I can't record those other two ones until I get where you'll say you'll record right. this and then the bank will release all that other so we, court. So right. we have a chicken and an egg thing is exactly. what we've got going on. So yep. again, we're happy to, to work with the institution or the county or try to figure out a way through it, but it's impossible for us to say there's a lot one when there's not a lot one. Yep. There's a parcel A or whatever the parcel number is of the entirety of it. That was built and it was fine, but it will be a lot one once the subdivision is recorded. It is not a lot one right now. Yep. Okay. Now we just needed to coordinate with them because this is this this is one of those like Norm just been. We're, we're pointing to the county. The county's pointing to the more the financial institution, and they're pointing to us. And we just needed to get on the same page here, but it's it's putting all of us in a situation where it's hard for us to, to definitively say something is true or not. Right. Okay, so with that, look for a motion. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at engineering. Are you comfortable with the red lines that are there for moving forward, or would you like the red lines addressed? No, I think we've got to have the red lines addressed. There's significant red lines there, I think, that, that need to be addressed before this moves forward. I mean, I think that's really the, the hold up here is, is engineering red line. So. If, if that's how engineering feels, I'll make a motion to table the Urkenbrax subdivision review until the red lines are, are more fleshed out. And during such time, we can we can work on getting the deferral agreement, a connector's agreement, uh, work with the, the county and the financial institution to, to try and clear this up so it goes through the process a little bit smoother. Okay, and a motion to the table. Is there a second? Second. Second by fire, Taylor. Um, any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Motion to the uh, applications table. Um, 
and say, we'll get these over to you and we'll get the deferral a copy of our uh, template for the development agreement as well as the uh, deferral, agreement. deferral agreement. Thank you on we both of those. Right, if you'll give yep. the same same information, information. We'll and, and we'll we'll try and get this this coordinated. But yeah, there's there's still a lot that needs to be done for us to move forward, and, and that one will be a nice one to, to try and get some closure on. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. For Thank you, Clint. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was say, yeah, I'll, I'll write it down. Okay. Looks like next item on the agenda is the hills. Proposed hills at Summit Ridge facing plan. And it looks like um, Sean Herring has joined us. Can you hear us, Sean? I can. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. Thanks. Do you have anyone else with Salisbury planning on attending? I don't think so. Just me. Okay. Sounds good. Good. Um, Okay, so this is, we saw this last DRC. Um, they're proposing making some changes to the proposed phasing plans associated with the essentially the east side of the hills at Summit Ridge. Can I give you a, a reference point? Um, there's a new road that's um, been constructed that just runs along that south and west side of Summit Ridge Parkway um, that's, that's built out and go on their building working on this phase is b1 and b2 currently that was just paved as of a, about a week and a half ago and now they're going to start working on phases d1 and d2 um, as that was previously approved they stuck with those same approved plans to be able to begin the construction of those the modification um, and after providing them feedback in the last drc what they've done is relocated um, this new road, relocated it south from along the, the power line corridor that goes through their power pole corridor in which they've put a, a lot um, between the road and the corridor and on the west side, they've um, provided two lots there. So they've addressed that comment over there. The proposed slope of that road is just around seven and a quarter percent um, for that as it goes up to connect those two, two roads. So with this one here, what we're looking at is proposed phasing um, and providing a recommendation to Planning Commission <coughs> City Council on, on the proposed phasing of that. So the change from the original one is D3 was included in L in the original submittal. Um, associated with that. So John, for clarity, D1 and D2, D1 and D2 are already under construction and moving forward. They have not changed. F has not changed. D3 has been pulled out of L and C has been changed to the extent of just losing a lot and adding a road. That's, that, that's the summation of where we're at with what's happened. You might want to zoom in right by that D3 mark there, John, just to kind of show where that road's going to go and, and that kind of stuff. My, my personal thought is, is that this is, well, my professional thought also is that this improves things significantly for connectivity, circulation, et cetera, et cetera, throughout the subdivision. This is probably something that should have been put in there at the very beginning, but but now that they're adding it, 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 it is going to add, yes. again, connectivity, circulation. It, it'll have, uh, I believe it has a water line loop through there as it well. Does. So it's going to add all of the infrastructure that they're adding and proposing here is a betterment to what was previously approved in my opinion. Yep. Does L have to go in before F can be built on? L and F would then become uh, synonymous basically, just like Correct. You know, C will now allow well, B and that kind F, of stuff. F could actually, so F could actually could be by itself. constructed by itself. No, but F cannot be yeah, done unless C is done. Right. So essentially, um, C, F, and B2 need to be done all together. Um, D1, D2, D3, and C need to be done together. No. So C can be done without B2 and F. Correct. C, yeah. C, C can be C done with can B and be done C. With D3 and D1, D2, and B1. So yes. F can come through with B2 and C, and then L will be on its own. Yes. 
So good, good question. That's a good clarification. Yep. Okay. Uh, Taylor, if I have any concerns with it or I don't thoughts? have anything. Okay. John, don't know uh, if they've come. Okay. Before I've I said my piece. I think it's a, a good addition. I think it's a good change to, to improve the situation there. Okay. Yeah. Mitch, like any thoughts? Connectivity with every one of the phases now. So okay. I don't have anything. Randy? Nothing more. Nothing with Randy. Jason? <laughs> Nothing with planning. Um, we say engineering, we've already talked about those things. So um, it's not any other discussion. Uh, look for a motion. I'll make a motion that we we uh, approve the change to the phasing plan for the hills at Summit Ridge um, with the condition that any red lines we address, which I don't think there are any. Are there? Not, not in regards to phasing. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, there was something else we talked about with that. I guess that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got a motion? Is there a second? Okay. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion on that? Oh, actually, I need to modify my motion. And, okay. and Sean, this is a clarification. So because because there's a new road in this, this is considered a major change, which means that it needs to move through the process of going back to planning commission, city council, and approved that way. Now, I think what you have approved today. Uh, there's things that you could start working on. However, with that new road in there, uh, C and D3, they need to wait till we get through the process of, of the re-approval of preliminary before you, you do anything on that. So the reason I need to modify my motion is, is I make a motion that we recommend approval of the phasing plan. Um, to the Planning Commission and City Council. Right. Okay. Wait, are you okay with that change? Okay. Um, that said, a motion and a second uh, to recommend approval of the proposed phasing plan to Planning Commission City Council. Um, all those in favor, you say aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Motion passes unanimously. Um, again, Sean, we'll provide these red lines to you. Um, we'll send them uh, so you've got them just so you can start addressing them as you're preparing for uh, the final application after it goes through the preliminary review of the phasing. So. So and that would be for D3, C, and L, right? Correct. Perfect, because F's approved, and so that would... Okay, yep. that, that lines up great. Perfect. Yep. So you'll be, with a resubmit, you'll be on the on Planning Commission in two weeks. Correct. And, and City Council the week after that. Correct. Okay, yeah, we'll make sure everything's addressed as needed. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye. We, we, Mike, we didn't sure. make a mistake with Park Review. That needs to move forward to the planning commission as well. Correct. Okay. I'm, so we just need to make sure that that was a recommendation in that motion, not necessarily us approving it. Kira. I, I think so. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. For, for Park Review. Okay. The last item on the agenda is the approval of minutes um, for the May 26th meeting. Um, is there any comments on that? Motion to approve. Uh, okay, a motion to approve. Take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, do I have a second? Wade would love to second it. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes passed unanimously. If there are any other, any other items, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. I like Do we really want to? I don't want this to end. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned at 10.50. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Payne. Thank you, Kathy, for that. <laughs>